A lot of people around the world find their inheritance in old tools and machinery. Perhaps you have a grandparent or a parent who you remember solely through their smell of sawdust. And you may visualise visiting their studio or their workshop where they would tinker around and make things that brought them joy in their old age or throughout their lifetime. Although I never met my great grandmother, that is the case for me also. And I inherited some of her tools this being one of them. She was a woodcarver and her and her husband actually had a shared workshop that they spent a lot of time in together, presumably making stuff and passing the time. They were very much British gentry. <laughs> that meant they didn't have to sell their things to make a living. However, of course, their living descendants do. And perhaps because of that, my great grandmother spent a lot of time making her own tools. This is one such tool. She turned the handle from what looks like oak to me. The grain is pretty unmistakable. And she even took the time to carve her surname into the handle, which of course, I now bear. So if you're in a similar situation to me and you've inherited a tool or found one in a junk shop or whatever you want to restore, I'm going to go through the steps that uh, I would do or I'm going to do to give this chisel new life. Ideally, it would have been great to have a lathe because I could mount this on there and then use sandpaper to clean it perfectly, but I don't have a lathe and maybe a lot of you don't as well. I'm going to be using some basic tools that you can acquire easily or rent if you would like to, but you can also do this entirely by hand with sandpaper and a little bit of patience. But I would recommend getting hold of a grinding wheel if you if your blade is in this much trouble. And also I think you're going to need some little cleany outy tools. Weirdly, a really good tip is using dentist tools to do jobs like this. My mother uses them for sculpting because I really like good at getting in the nooks and crannies and I feel like for this detail here it would be really good to have that. I don't have one here so I'll have to use something else but just a little pro tip there. So let's get cracking. Now if you're a seasoned chiseler you'll know that the secret to the perfect sharpness is a very flat back so that is the first point of call. I'm using a 400 grit diamond stone in this clip and what you can do here is use a sharpie to cover the surface of the back so you can see what material is being removed and illuminating to yourself the high and lower spots. Because I've only got a 400 grit diamond stone it I have chopped this video down significantly it took me a long time to get anywhere with this. It really is a, a test of your patience. So just be aware of that when you set out on this journey. Now, if you don't have a diamond stone, you can use self-adhesive sandpaper like this Merca sticker or just put some normal sandpaper down and make sure you use some double-sided tape so it's definitely flat. I got to the stage where I was nearly quite there with, with the back. I'm going to be taking a bit off the top anyway to clean up that bevel so I'm not going to take ages going all the way to the tip if I don't have to. This is kind of the main step because it starts to look like an actual chisel that you can cut with and I'm going to put a primary bevel on this with the grinding wheel at a 25 degree angle. Again, I would highly recommend either getting or renting a grinding wheel for this process. They come with honing guides for this purpose, but you can, if you are stuck to sandpaper, you can buy little honing guides from Veritas or even make one. Um, if you have very steady hands, of course, you can try doing it like that, but I would recommend a honing guide just so you start on a really, really even bevel. My wheels got a bit old, so I'm just re-honing that with a stone to make it nice and efficient. That didn't really take me too long at all once I had a freshly ground stone. So now I'm just going to flatten that back up. Now I'm not removing any unnecessary waste and get on to polishing it up. One thing that was quite an easy fix was just cleaning out this, this maker's mark on the steel. And the way I did that was just get the initial stuff out with a uh, with a scalpel and then pour in some thinners, the same kind that I use for cleaning my spray guns, so just standard thinners. That made a world of difference once I left it on there for a bit, so that's a really quick and easy way of doing it.
there for a sec and introduce the person who's going to help me with today's sponsor. He is also a great grandson of my great grandmother, so he is my cousin, and he's just a lot more persuasive and better at this kind of thing. Now we're going to talk about today's sponsor, My Heritage. Robert and I are fortunate that a lot of our family history is quite well known to us. But with over 19 billion records, My Heritage has helped us discover lots more. For example, I found out that my great grandfather was a fighter pilot, which explains a lot. It was also really fun for us to use the reanimation software on portraits of our grandparents and recolor them as well. Check out how absolutely wild this is. It took us some getting used to, but it's just unbelievable to have this kind of technology at our fingertips. I also figured out the instant discovery button, which led me to some new people like this guy here, who even had a picture. Meanwhile, I'm gonna go remind Robin that thanks to our great grandmother, we have a genetic predisposition to woodwork. Since we gotta start thinking about careers from the age of 12 nowadays. Family is obviously really important to us and being able to look at a tangible family tree is really exciting. Sign up to my heritage now and receive a 14 day free trial. And if you wanna continue with the discoveries then you'll get 50% off from there. There's a link in my bio where you can check that all out. Thanks again MyHeritage for sponsoring this video. I think I see a bright future in marketing for Robin. So let's get back to the project. Now this was the terrifying part. When you're dealing with such fine carving that is actually not that deep it's really really scary to go in with the scalpel so I was going very, very slowly at this point because I really didn't want to damage the history on this handle. I just wanted to remove the surface dirt that had probably been accumulated in the years since she'd used it. So in the drawers that we kind of kept them in before we realized that the chisels were there. All right, now it's the final moment to make this chisel really work like a proper tool. We're gonna to put a secondary bevel on it and I'm gonna be using my diamond stones for this. I'm gonna start with my 800 grit one and then move up to my 1200 grit one and then use a strop with some autosol to really finish it off. Got my mate Lindsay Doyle around to give me a hand. At my desk got a little oil at the same time. Lindsay Doyle is really common for this kind of thing. As far as I'm aware, it's a nice natural oil. Oh my God, guys, I've just seen something on the back here that says, do not use on oak timbers. I'm hoping that because there was oil on this before that might have dried and sank into the grain first. It's not gonna to be too much of an issue. The reason you can't use linseed oil on oak apparently is because oak is too porous. But this isn't a particularly porous piece of oak. As I say, it's been around for a long time. It's had different oils put on it. So I'm hoping it's gonna be fine. If anyone knows uh, more about it, please drop it in the comments because I don't wanna have just ruined that. But uh, yeah. Okay, we're gonna use this spare top that I've got under my desk, or I've had under my desk for quite some time. It was an experimental top. I was experimenting with a couple of X-brace angles and um, it got forgotten about, so <laughs> it's covered in dust, but it will be a good way to practice our new chisel. That's pretty sharp, I'd say. I think this is gonna be my new voicing chisel, you know? And there it is. I like to think that I've kept a lot of the history on it whilst also making it a functional tool to use in my own workshop. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. It was a fantastic privilege to bring this chisel back to life. Just a note here, I've had a few spam uh, robots pretending to be me in the comments. Their names usually start with like Telegram, something like that. 
they will scam you and I will feel so guilty so please just watch that sorry about that they've hidden me from seeing them even at some times and I don't know how to deal with that so apologies just be aware I will see you next time I am very excited to go to sunny Austin to exhibit some guitars. So many videos to catch you up on. I need to do some hardcore editing when I'm back from the States. See you later. <laughs>